Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, our flagship program to go out to the events, with the signal from the noise. We're at VMworld 2014, fifth year. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Adam Ray, CEO of Basho. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here. You know, DevOps seems to be a hot trend right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, Dave and I always talk, uh, you know, I had one of my degrees in, in my computer science degrees was in databases, but back in the 80s when you really never admitted to anyone that you were a database guy, so it's like, now it's the hot thing with big data. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not hearing a lot about big data here in the show, it's kind of a sub subplot because a lot of, you know, app, app focus. Right, right. Um, but this, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on in DevOps that has to do with a lot of the under, under the hood things. So break, us, break down what's, what's your take of the key trends that's going on under the hood powering cloud? Well, I mean, you look, at the end of the day, it's all about the workload. And so, you know, DevOps is just nothing for emerging of operations and developer worlds coming together. And so, if you look at across the workload, like Basha's point of view is around distributed systems and how we look at the workload from the data going up. If you wanted to look at it from the traditional DevOps angle, it's been driven not by operations people, but by developers doing things, uh, whether ease of use, orchestration tools, trying to figure out how they're going to use Amazon and bring it back into the prem. So most of these companies, I mean the other, so DevOps would be the one key buzzword, and the other key buzzword would be hybrid cloud, right? Uh, and all of it's around trying to decide, okay, right now we're going from monolithic workloads that are always on prem, to workloads that are going to be distributed, not only at Amazon, at Go, at, you know, uh, Google, you take your choice as your or uh, hosted provider, and how do we manage that and what does it mean to our developer community and to our operations community? So what about Amazon? What's your take on Amazon right now? Obviously they're winning. Obviously, when I talked to Jerry Chenick, Ray Lock, he's like, hey, you know, I, there's got to be an Amazon for the enterprise. No one's materialized yet. We're seeing components come out. Docker's an indicator mm -hmm. of, on the app side where there are, there are developers wanting to do enterprise stuff. But, but I want to be shielded from some of the infrastructure pieces, and there's a lot of legacy involved. So talk about your experience between public and private cloud, your observations around, for the developers out there, the nuances between developing on a public cloud versus some private or hybrid. So, so I have kind of a unique point of view on this because I you know, helped start and found a company that was sold to CenturyLink tier three. And so we were dealing with hybrid cloud when hybrid cloud was you know, everybody. Before hybrid cloud. Yeah, when <laughs> hybrid, exactly. When hybrid cloud was, you know, everybody said cloud bursting, and you're like, what does that really mean? And you're like, well, I don't know, but it sounds really good, right? <laughs> uh, and so if, if you think about it uh, on what's true now, I, I come back to APIs. It comes back to web services and it comes back to ease of Why does Amazon get driven? Why does AWS have so much engagement? Because the developers don't have to figure out the back end. They've got a set of APIs they can program to and they can run with whatever their app set is. As it starts to expand to hybrid cloud, you have to ask the question, what does that mean to VMware and its ecosystem? What does that mean to the OpenStack community and its ecosystem? And how are people going to pull those workloads and dissect them? So if you're, you look at it from, from the top level, I honestly think it starts with governance and policy management at an orchestration tier, but then it breaks down to my level at the database, understanding how eventual consistency databases are going to run across multiple environments and deliver on quality of service and scale that's expected out of enterprise. So there was a time when people you know, said, ah, oh, distributed database, object database, forget it, it's not going to happen, it's too complicated, and all of a sudden, boom, things changed. So, so what changed? And then take us through sort of where you fit in the whole database ecosystem. Yeah, it's, it's so, I mean, we're considered a NoSQL database in mm -hmm. that day. Uh, it's, uh, if you think of the database market, that's under the unstructured side which would be NoSQL and its derivatives, or you would see uh, HDFS and its uh, derivatives. And so underneath that market, which might be you know, three to five billion and growing aggressively right now, we, we've got a key value and object storage. And, and what we're doing is where you're seeing us play is uh, things like private clouds. You're seeing us say, play in object store for public clouds. You're seeing us play in different profiles are set for key value, where like for example, Best Buy is using us for their shopping cart or you're seeing uh, Riot Games use us for all their gamer profile. 
And all these type of situations they're asking for is they're asking for, you know, we need to have a consistent set. We expect massive scale. We don't know everything that's coming our way. Can you say Internet of Things being a publisher of that? Mm -hmm. And how do we prepare for it? Well, the relational databases, wonderful, but terrible when you have to start dealing with all that distributed environment. Now you're sharp. It's terrible when you have to deal with, you don't know what type of data is coming your way. And this is where a company like Basho. And, and low latency of. is obviously something that you guys got to be good at. Well, performance is, is critical, right? Uh, and so from our perspective, it's about the architectural design. You know, the, the, the intriguing challenge to me in the industry is, if companies like mine, who are building databases for operational scale and efficiency, can um, deliver on the promise of saying, look, you, throw out a petabytes of data, we don't care. You throw it across multiple environments. The next big challenge is, is how do you structure that data? If you're out and so you hear this buzz scientist. It, right now, there, there's a real data scientist. It's like the guy who really is with the PhD, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but everybody else is just stealing the name. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they, yeah. And then we well, what's the difference, right, you know. between, a, between a statistician and a data scientist? Salary. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's a huge problem. People actually putting data science on their title and their stats or they're an analyst and they're going into projects setting a false expectation yeah. and so there's a little weird thing right now where a data science really isn't a data science. So there's a little nuance there, Dave. Remember we talked about that two weeks yeah. ago in Boston. So you know, that's a problem. It's a massive problem. It's a huge problem. problem. So I got to ask you the question on this front. So there's two things that it used to be. We had to build an app. Let's decide the database, and then we pick the app. Mm -hmm. What's the functional decomposition of it, how we build it, stuff with mm -hmm. life cycle, great. Mm -hmm. Pick your database, app gets defined. With distributed computing and cloud, that's kind of not, not happening now. So is that shifted now where here's the app and then the database stuff un is underneath it. So has that selection process changed a bit with distributed systems now in the cloud? Um, are developers consciously making application decisions based upon the database? or are they making app decisions and then picking a database? Um, well, I would say developers right now are playing to an ease of use game from a DevOps angle. They're, uh, they're, they're not concerned. We have a real disconnect. If you think DevOps, it's a wonderful, like you started your, your Q&A with. It's a, it's a wonderful term, but the reality is, it, outside of this world, it means very little to traditional enterprise. Yeah, it scares them actually. Yeah, it scares the heck out of them. Yeah. And so you've got traditional operational IT guys who are starting to ask, how do I support my developers? And, how, and many of them aren't necessarily even developers, they're sysadmin guys, et cetera. And you've got the developers that are choosing their database strictly on ease of use. It's, it's a document store as an example, and this document store has great API sets, so I yeah. want to use it. Now forget the fact that I might actually pound the heck out of that for a mission critical app, and it's got to go across three Mongo continents. MongoDB. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying companies' names, I'm not saying companies' names. Yeah. So, no, I I, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's early in the process, but here's where I, I'd say it's going to go. I, I'd say ultimately what companies are going to start doing is what they've always traditionally done, and I think this is where a, Eventual consistent distributed database like Basho and others that we're competing against has a great future. There is an opportunity where the large enterprises are going to say, look, it has to be operationally efficient at scale and I want to cover as many use cases as I can possibly cover. Who's going to have the best platform to play for that space? And so you're not going to be able to just say it's a document store, or a columnar, or an object, or a key value. You're going to have to be able to, to tell a cohesive story yeah. because the real overhead is back in support. Yeah, and, and is there a scale ceiling there? So like, again, you brought columnar, so we were just at the Vertica event a couple weeks ago, okay. and you know, I call it the Ferrari, because it's a Ferrari, yeah. you jam it, you're on, the, you're on the Autobahn, you're going 100 zillion miles an hour, Facebook uses it. I mean, their use case is just like, it's really- well, they have a gazillion engineers, right? It's wicked fast, it's super duper, but now that doesn't have a lot of flexibility to it, they're trying right. to do that. So that brings it to your point. Okay, I got a variety of use cases, mobile is number one feature, I got to support mobile. That's in probably table stakes, would mm -hmm. you agree? Uh, I don't think it from, I mean, to no. be really candid, from a database perspective, it's mobile is not necessarily a table stake equation. Okay. I would uh, argue that operational scale and efficiency is a table stake equation if you're thinking enterprise. I, I would agree, so let's talk about that. What is that table stake ceiling, floor and ceiling use case parameters? Um, I mean, because Mongo's been kind of ding, although they, they admit publicly that it's not the case, but there's a Scale point where Mongo just doesn't. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's no, good. It's great good. hack, lamp stack, great. It's, it's well known. It's I, easy. Uh, right? yeah, it's easy right. to use. It is, you know, it's wonderfully a strong interface, and I don't know the new CEO, but I knew Max, and I think they did a great marketing sure. campaign to understand the developers. Yep. 
Um, but everyone's always retooling that Mongo point and they get scale piece. So what is the variables for scale? I mean, so if you're thinking scale, you're going to have to think clusters and you're going to have to think multiple data centers. The, the, and you're going to have to think the operational overhead that goes behind and supports that. Because the real cost is not the hardware and software long haul, it's how many people do you have to have management, what's your engineering and operation overhead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we had one I customer say they had 65 guys managing servers. Yeah, it's, it's a perfect example. Just, serve, just servers. Now you introduce that complexity with database. Well, and it's, and by the way, introduce the complexity that the DBAs of today aren't positioned to be able to actually support the technology that's coming down the pipe, so you're going to pay a lot more for that guy than some guy that you would have at Oracle World. Right, so Good Adam, news, DBAs. Talk about, yeah. talk about, talk <laughs> yeah, about, yeah, talk about what's going on skill with, set opportunity. Talk about what's going on with React and also Basho, your company, and some of the things you guys are doing. Just get, get a plug in, because you guys do a good job. Share with the audience kind of successes you're having and uh, like your killer use cases that you're doubling down on right now. Yeah, so right now what we're doubling down for the next six months is you're going to see us uh, uh, push heavily KV, which is going to be profiles, shopping carts, uh, object stores, things of that nature. You're going to see us push in search. Uh, we rolled out solar as a search engine uh, on top of so people could get access at scale to what we're doing. You're also going to see um, us pushing out a lot of object store. So we've got S3 inter, um, compatibility and expect us to see more on the Swift side uh, from an OpenStack community. The idea being that most of the clients who are picking us for blobs or other type of object store solution set are looking to be able to potentially do hybrid cloud, or at least they want the option. I, I say the option because I think the industry is still a little immature in this particular Was point. there a reason why you picked solar over Elasticsearch? I mean, the people that seems to be a toss up right now, depending upon your flavor. Well, so I mean, at the underpinnings, Elasticsearch is built on solar too. Okay, it is, okay. Uh, So, I mean, Elasticsearch has just taken a, a, a memory tier on, and laid it on top and it's much stronger in usability. So in theory, we could go. So they're pre-packaging uh, solar, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. We, we could go and do some of the same things at Elasticsearch. Actually, the intriguing thing is, is I would say, without giving you timelines, that there will be a day in which Elasticsearch will run on top of React as well. Okay. Can, can awesome. you take us, Adam, can you take us through a sort of an engagement with the customer, trying to understand the, the opportunity, I mean, I know it's big, but is it sort of the share shift from the traditional database guys? Is it sort of more, somebody's got a vision of what they want to build at, at, at scale, and they're looking at alternatives? Um, talk about when you engage with customers, just what that's like. Where's the demand come from? Who are you engaging with? Who are you competing with? Well, so our, our client portfolio, we've got about 200 enterprise clients, and the consistent thing you're going to see out of our enterprise client base is they're thinking about scale and operational simplicity. So they've already, like uh, NHS, uh, National Healthcare Society, which is the social services uh, for uh, UK mm -hmm. with 80 million patients. They're running us in their spine project. In that particular project, uh, they've got 80 million clients who have to have their profiles available anytime for any doctor based on emergency basis. They don't know how much scale they're going to have or how much incremental data they're going to add to those profiles. And so having a key value store like React is, is incredibly ideal because they can ensure that everything's available at any time. Those type of critical use cases, we're going to look to double down on more, whether it's government, whether it's gaming, whether it's advertising, areas where we've had success. Uh, the, the, what I find intriguing is if we can do concurrent transactions at scale on top of React, and we've proven that we might be one of the best in the world at that, what else long haul could we do with that? And so Adjacencies we, that you'd be looking at. Well, Object Store is the one we did, right? Yeah. So we, we did React KV and then we brought out Object Store. Uh, we, we layered search on top of that. Without giving any more information, I'll just say that if I've got a component that is already strongly needed by enterprise, i.e. operational scale and efficiency, and I've shown that I can give them multiple use cases, how many more use cases could I deliver over time? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a, it's, but it's a classic, I've got a non-traditional, I need a non-traditional approach to solve this problem. I yes. can't just shove it all into a relational database. Well, so. I, so then that leads you to a key value store, which leads you to all the choices that say, okay, now who's, who's got the scale, who's got the performance, Correct. and who's got the adjacent capabilities that can give me a roadmap for growth. So a perfect example of that not knowing what you're up against is Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. So we've got a large uh, gas company in Europe who is using us to manage all their furnace information. That furnace information, they're collecting three data points every three seconds across 60 million users. That's just where they're starting. The reason they're doing it is so they can deliver a better, uh, they can actually predict when the furnace is going to crash by reading that data point. So they can call you up and say, your furnace is going down, 
We want to come fix it before it actually goes down. Now, ultimately, they can help you manage your house more efficiently, save your own bill. All that data, right now, they just have a certain amount that they're capturing. Eventually, who knows where. What better than an unstructured database? You couldn't even do that with a SQL cost-effectively, right? Mm. I mean, you could. I don't want to say you can't, but as soon as you started adding it's to it, it's, right? it's a massive mess to mm -hmm. manage. And by the way, relational databases have a place in, in society, asset transactions a whole bit, it's just every use case has a different Well, that's what's interesting. You look at the, our forecast of SQL and non-SQL, they're both growing, you that know? No SQL's growing slow a little faster, but. Well, yeah. We'd love to get you hooked up with uh, Jeff Kelly, our big data analyst. Uh, you guys are doing great work. Adam, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I'll give you a chance to plug the event. You got an event coming up. Yes. Share the folks out there, your upcoming event, topics being discussed, and we'll wrap this up. I appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, we host a distributed systems conference. It's a neutral conference where us or competitors or others that are status on uh, distributed systems, hybrid cloud, are coming to speak. We're doing that October 28th, 29th in Las Vegas. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking for a pretty strong showing. We think it's kind of falls in the path that people are trying to figure out how to manage their workloads across multiple environments. We want to be the place you want to go. Guys, Bash Show, great company, um, great technology company, been there, really pioneering the DevOps thing on the database side. All the actions in the data and storage, Dave. You know, I always say, you want to go right to the, you know, they always say in finance, follow the money, right? Yeah. In, in this world, follow the data and the databases and storage. So that seems to be the action always been in cloud. Congratulations, success. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE sharing the data with you here live in San Francisco at VMworld 2014. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>